Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. I've had some requests to show the construction of the Wildflowers book that I recently shared, and I hope to get to that in the future. But in the meantime, I've also had several requests on how I constructed this stacked envelope flip. And so I'm going to show that today, but I want to be clear, I didn't create this. This is something that's been around for, I don't know, probably forever. When I first started scrapbooking 26, 27 years ago, Memory Makers Are Creating Keepsakes, there was a an article in there about somebody's mother's scrapbook and it had envelopes stacked somewhat like this and then she had emulated that in, in a layout that she'd done with some stacked envelopes. So it's by no means of the word new. I just didn't remembered it and incorporated it into my junk journal. And there's, like anything else, there's a lot more than one way to do it. I'm just going to show you how I do it because I find it easy. Now I do use an envelope board, but uh, you don't have to. You can just use the dimensions and, and put the square inside because these are square pieces of paper to make these envelopes. So while it's not required, it certainly is a lot easier. And I'm going to show you a couple variations plus some of the products that I use to create them. All right, so this particular this particular stack is made by creating four separate envelopes. And I'll put this in the description box below. But the dimensions for this, they were designed to fit this particular book. And this book is, I don't even know, I didn't measure it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's just about five and a quarter by uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. about six. So five and a quarter wide by about six tall. And this stack, you could obviously make it tighter, but I chose these sizes to fit this style size album simply because I like that size. And so the measurements for the paper to make the envelopes are these six inches square and scored at two and three quarters, which is also, and I'm gonna put the metric equivalents in the description box so that, so that you have those. The, but they're at about because it's really hard to see on my scoreboard. So just be aware that those are there because I keep forgetting that not everybody uses the U.S. system of crazy U.S. system of measurement. Anyway, six inches and scored at two and three quarters. The second envelope is five and a quarter and scored at two and a half. The third is four and a half scored at two and an eighth. And then the last one is three and three quarters, and it's scored at one and three quarters. Now I'm going to show you super quick a couple variations. So you can see they don't have to be this size. This is just what I did to fit this particular book and to get the look I wanted. And I've already scored these and folded these and glued these just for the sake of speed and ease. And I've got one to show you real quick. So this is the large envelope. And you can see on my book, I started this off when I glued it down or put it in place, I did it straight. But but you can angle it. You can you can alter this really to suit your needs. I just liked the flow of this configuration, which is really why I went with it. So this is my sixth and six inch envelope. And this is the five and a quarter. This is the four and a half. And then this is the three and three quarters. And you know, you can move them around. I This is exactly how I do it. I kind of lay it out and think about where I like it and what I want it to look like, and then I glue it down. And the way I glue it down is I start with the back envelope. I don't put it in my book or my page yet. I glue the envelopes. And I use glue rather than dry line tape simply because you've got more wiggle room. This uh, is the last of my art glitter glue in this bottle. So I'm going to use that, but any of your, your wet glues. And then again, I have to think about how wide is my book and how tall is my book. And I want to make sure that what I'm creating is going to fit within those parameters. And then I look and see, well, where, where does it lay? Where do I want it to lay? How much do I want to show? And I'll put glue just on that section. I don't even overuse it because I can always come back in and add more. I just want to get it where I want it and not closed. I don't want to close the envelope underneath it. So I'll push down on that, give it a second before I lift it up. And you can see I've got no glue showing underneath. So I didn't, if I need to, I can come back and tuck some glue in here. But my first goal or my first step is just to get it laid out the way I want it. And a lot of times I'll use my grid to make sure that I'm mostly straight. I don't, don't care if it's perfect, but I do want it to be mostly straight. 
And then I'll take the next envelope down, in this case the four and a half, and I'll lay it out. Where do I want it? Do I want it to overlap a little bit? See, I kind of like the way it looked up here, so I want it to overlap. So that tells me I need to put my glue just right, right here along this edge. And a lot of times I will tape this down with my purple tape, but it, it's really not necessary. I just, and I want that edge to peek over a little bit. So I'm going to glue that down, give it a second to dry, make sure, now is the time to make sure. See, I got a little bit of glue on here. So I'm going to wipe that away quickly before, before it does its job and glues something together. All right. And then the last one, in this case, the three and a three quarter envelope, I want that to come down here. And so that's just going to be at the very tip or the very corner. And I'll try to move up and stay in frame and... Again, I'm going to use my lines to make sure it's mostly straight, though it certainly doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll put that here. All right, and once that's completely dry, or mostly dry, I guess, I choose to use Velcro. You know, you don't have to. You can see it lays pretty flat like this. You don't really even have to put anything in there. But I like the Velcro closures. Now, this size... I believe it's 0.375 is my favorite, but I haven't been able to find it lately. But these are the kind of Velcro fasteners that I use. They're the Velcro brand, Thin Clear Fasteners. And this is the uh, 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeter circle, general purpose. These are the ones. But I believe these ones, the little bit smaller, you can see there. Maybe you can see with the glare. The little bit smaller ones, I believe, are 3.7, 0.375. And I really like this size, but you can see, I can always either cut it or for most of these, this larger circle will work as well. So those are the, the ones I do. Once I've got it and I'm happy with it and it's mostly dry, I can come back and add a little bit more glue if I need a little bit more glue. Oh, I didn't even glue this one down. Hmm? Glue the whole thing together. And another thing you can do, just a, a quick variation, is if you don't glue all your pieces down, like here's a great example, I haven't glued this down yet. I'd put a little piece of Tyvek right here and then sew this into a signature. And then I could, you know, angle it the other way and then put this as a signature in my book. So it doesn't have to sit on the back of a page. It can be an insert in a journal and it actually makes a really fun insert. I don't have any samples with me, but one I recently did and sent out did it that way. I sewed the bigger piece into my signature and closed it up and then I instead of configuring it like this, this I turned it this way and I, I stacked them all up and that was you know just kind of a fun different option and I used velcro closures for that one simply because it wasn't on the back of a page it was loose and then I put a little you can just use the velcro dots as they are but I find that a little bit of glue helps I put a dot of glue put the velcro dots close it and then at the vi when I'm ready to put it in my page, I'll glue the back envelope down just for some stability. So I'll put glue along the back, lay it down on my page, and then I go in with the Velcro dots and put a Velcro dot closure here and here and here and here. And then on the very bottom one, the very last one, I'll put a Velcro dot right down here to keep it flat on the page in my book. And that's, and you can see here, that's exactly what this one does. There is a Velcro dot down here at the bottom and then I lift up each of the, the subsequent pieces. So I've got one, two, three, and four separate envelope pockets. All right, so that, that is all there is to it. That is the construction. Now, you, cer certainly you can change the sizes to get different looks. This three quarter inch stagger is my favorite, but if you want to do uh, let's see, this is a one inch stagger. So this is at six, five, four, and three are the, the squares. And you get just a little bit more variation in the size of your envelopes. And these are just done with some extra six by six paper pads that I had. Um, and you can see here, you don't, if you, if you score it exactly in half, you're going to get a square envelope. So you'd want it just off half. And that gives you excuse me, the different envelope sizes. Well, this last one, this three inch one, I scored initially at one and a quarter, and you can see it, 
it's too long. So I adjusted it to one and three eighths. And honestly, the second one, I scored it at one and three quarters and I'd probably adjust it to one and seven eighths just to, I don't know, get, get a better, get a better size difference and not have my envelope flap so close to the bottom. But you can see the difference in that look. And if that's, if you need something a little bit slimmer, then, then maybe adjusting your sizes by an inch might be a better choice for you. It just really depends on the project. I did another one showing it with half inch. So these are three quarter inch adjustments, graduated size. These are half inch adjustments. I did it at six, five and a half, five, and four and a half. And you can see here. So there's the six, five and a half, five, and four and a half. And that still gives you a great look. There's enough size difference there that it still has that visual appeal. Completely different pattern paper. Like I said, I just pulled from my six by six paper pads, but you still get that graduated envelope stack look. Now this one I did deliberately, intentionally um, different to show you what it'll look like more than anything else. These are graduated at one inch. So six, five, four, and three. And I did, and I scored them exactly in half at three, two and a half, two, and one and a half. And that gives you a completely different look. And I like it. And for certain things, I would probably use it, but it just gives you the straight up and down because they're all square. Now I could certainly angle and offset them, but I wanted to show that, that based on what your needs are, you can create different looks. I was thinking, you know, you could tuck in the back as a pocket and maybe you could on the last one, but that doesn't really work for this style because you need that back place where you would tuck if you didn't glue. That's how you're adhering one envelope to the next. So it doesn't work quite as well as a tuck. And it does add a little bit of bulk, especially when you're using cardstock, but I don't shy away from bulk. So that doesn't bother me. It's just a completely different look, which is what I wanted to show you. All right, and then to create them. For those of you who have an envelope scoreboard, it doesn't, it does a little bit matter the size. I use this little itty bitty one the vast majority of the time because usually when I make envelopes, I make small envelopes. And for those of you not familiar with it, it's a We Are Memory Keepers product. It's probably one of my favorite of the We Are Memory Keepers products. It offers inches at the top and it offers the metric system right down below. So you know, and then it gives you a guide on here. If you need your card to be this, you need your paper to be this, and this is where you score. So it's, it's really handy in that regard. It's all right here. You don't have to go hunting for anything. But for this, because it's larger sized, like my first score, well, I guess I could do it, but you'll notice on this one, it doesn't extend. So if I were to score my six inch paper, so let's say I'm just, I'm going to punch it at three, two and three quarters. So two and three quarters, I would punch. You'll notice that I run out of board. I run out of place. And then when I turn it to the side, I run out even more. So when I'm using paper this size, I'll use the larger envelope board. I don't know if you only have one, it doesn't really matter. You can totally make it work. But this one gives you options for much larger pieces. Um, and then you can do a couple, you can do boxes and bows and some other things with this as well. But this one has a pull out so that you know, you can really use a large piece there and still have your score line. I don't know. Does it matter that much? Probably not. But but here you go. So I'll pull this one out and I don't need the extended score line. It does have a tool here. And most of the time I don't even use this tool because I have found that this knife tip will tear my paper. Another tip, somebody had mentioned that certain card stocks, the paper tears. And that is true. Depending on how tightly woven the card stock is, it makes it tear a little bit more easily. I've had good luck sometimes with misting my paper first using like the Tim Holtz water mister and misting the paper first and then scoring it while it's still wet and then letting it dry. I know it's a lot of work and a lot of extra steps, but if you're worried about your paper tearing or cracking, like uh, one of these, I think the wood grain paper tore and cracked. Well, I kind of like that look and I would ink it. And if need be, I'll put some cellophane tape on it or something like that, which just adds to the appeal of this kind of a look. But if that's not what you want, maybe water will work. All right. So I told you on this one, I'll show you, I'll just show you one. I don't need, cause you do the same exact process for all of your envelope folds. And once you've made a couple, they're kind of intuitive. So the six inch piece of paper, the larger piece of paper, I'm going to score this one at two and three quarters to match the dimensions that I originally had. And so the only time I line this up is initially 
I put my paper in, I look for the two, here I'll zoom in so you can see it. I look for the two and three quarter mark, I line it up, and then I punch the paper, and then I'll use my score tool, and I'll put a score line right along. Before I move the paper, I'll put a score line right along in there, and I don't know how well you can see that, but but you just use the groove in the punch mechanism and pull it along in your score line. And then you turn it, and this groove line that you just created, this score line that you just created, is going to be lined up on the score line when you turn. So, lined it up at two and three quarters, punched, scored, now I'm gonna turn it, because I'm gonna make my second of four punches. And you can see the score line here and the score line here. I want these to match up, and that's gonna guarantee that I get my punch in the right spot. So I'll line it up, score line, score line. I mean, if it's not 100% perfect, life will go on. But line those up, make sure they mostly match. Can you see, there you go. Make sure they mostly match. And then I'll punch again, and I'll score again. I score punch, some people punch, I punch, then score. Some people score, then punch. Do what works for you. Gets you the same result in the end. So I've made two. Now I'm going to keep turning it around counterclockwise and doing the same thing. Can you turn clockwise? I don't know. I've never tried it. But this is what I think I learned originally at a demo, and so that's what I do. All right, I'm going to line up my score line with a score line on the board. I'm going to punch, and then I'm going to score again. And then I'll do the last turn, line up my score line with the board, punch, and my last score. And so I've got, oh, you can't see it there as well, but you can see it here. I've got four score lines. Now, the board also offers you the option right in, where is it? Isn't it on this one? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm losing my mind. I could have sworn there was a place to round the corners. Oh, here it is. There it is. On, on the little guy, it's in the back. And on this one, it's on the side. So both of them offer a place to give yourself the rounded corner. You can use your corner rounder. You can use your scissors. You don't have to use that. You can leave it square if you choose. But if you want to round your corner, you just line this up with a top and bottom of the, <clears throat> excuse me, edge. Let's see if I'm in frame, there we go. Line, tuck your corner in, line it up and punch and it gives you a rounded corner. Now that's a deeply rounded corner. So I don't know that I would use that deeply rounded corner on this size envelope and certainly not the smaller ones, but a regular corner render. And I'll show you this little itty bitty guy. You can see the difference in the size. Gives you a different size on the corner round. Okay, it's a lot easier to do this when it's flat on your work surface, so I'll do that. Okay, so you can see there are the two different sizes. There's that corner and there's that corner. They give you a different look, and I didn't have this straight, so I would have to, and that would make me crazy, so go in. There we go. And punch it again to make it a, a really rounded corner, and then that's it. You fold them, glue them, and stack them. And that is how you make the stacked envelope pocket. All right, the raffle. Um, thank you all for your support. I'm not, there's two families that are in contention for this, but I'm going to donate and it's just about $600 that I'm gonna be able to donate. So thank you all very much for your pledge with the buy me a coffee. And what I'm going to do, I've got three of the scrap and stamp cluster kits that are being raffled and I'll do those first and then I've got 10 of those folios that I made and I'll tuck pieces like either a cluster or an item with a cluster on it and maybe some vintage ephemera vocabulary cards library card cigarette cards uh, I've got some ice tickets some, some things like that I'll tuck those into little pockets so there'll be a treasure or two in each of those but I'll send off those um folios as well. Now, if anybody from Australia, I had a couple supporters from Australia, if anybody from Australia wins, I still can't send a package, but I can send a flat envelope. So maybe I'll put some flat ephemera or something and mail that off because I don't want to um, you know, leave anybody out. So what I did was I printed on the Buy Me A Coffee, they have this Excel spreadsheet and oh my gosh, those things are thin. So anybody who bought a coffee 
it was on that spreadsheet, printed the spreadsheet, and there you go. This was, this was my method. Now, it doesn't print the entire thing, so what I'm going to do is I'll announce who the winners are here, and then I'll send you an email because your email is attached to it. So that, that's my plan. And I was telling somebody else this morning that I keep wanting to reach over and eat one of these because this color of paper reminds me of those goldfish crackers and I was trying to nibble on the goldfish crackers. So, all right, 10 people. The first three will be the scrap and stamp cluster kits. Um, so this one is C-S-A-K-R-I dot D-R. That's the first part of her email. I'm not going to finish the email. And her name is Christina with a Z. So she gets one of the stamp and scrap cluster kits. And so that I don't blow it and drop something because these things are small, I'm going to tape them on there like that. All right, number two with a stamp and scrap cluster kit is... Sally Morch, Sally Moore, somebody. And again, I'm going to email the winners, but just, and then I'll send you, um, you know, my email address so that you can contact me with your mailing address and I'll get these out sometime this week. It honestly, today's Wednesday, it might be Saturday before I can get to the post office, but I will, I will make it happen. All right. So Sally Morch. And then the third of the stamp and scrap cluster kits is Steph Howells, Steph Howe. T-A-L-D-Y, and I don't want to read the rest of the email, but I think her name is Steph Howell or Howells. So those are the stamp and scrap cluster kit winners. And now the others are for a folio and or some other pieces. I, I promise not to, to let you down there. And there are 10 of those. So here we go. Spring Chick. Email is Spring Chick. I don't see the name on there. It probably says, but I don't see it. Spring Chick. And this one is Lillian Child. Lillian Child. Okay. And this one is Denise Kerr. Denise BG. Um, I'll move it and I'll take one from the bottom. I mean, they've all been mixed up, so there's no particular order on this one. The sweet something. And I'll, again, I'll email the person because I have a full list of the emails. So the sweet something. All right. And design CHA. Design C, design.CHA is part of the email address. I know this is cryptic, but this is what I get on here, and I will I will add detail later and make sure that these people get emailed. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five more. Uh, Paper Rose, Marcia, Marcia, somebody. Paper Rose is part of the email, and Marcia is the person's first name. And PC Kinder M. Patricia K-I-R, so Patricia somebody. And again, I will check and email people. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three more. All right, you know what, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna do this so y'all can see. One, two, three. So there's three names there. All right. Uh, D.R. Maria. Dr. Maria is part of the email address. I don't know if it's Dr. Maria or the initials Dr. Maria. Not sure, but that's another recipient. And DBL Gray 12. So Linda, Linda, Linda Gray, maybe. And Gay, my friend Gay McLean. Very cool, she lives in Scotland. Um, totally unintentional. Y'all saw, I just pulled, put it in, pulled it out. And you know, she gave me an idea to make one of those folios using plaid or tartan. And I recently found out that I'm Scottish or mostly Scottish. And she has just been, she made my hairy coo and she made my squirrel floof. 
So I'm thrilled that she was one of the people who, who won. That's awesome. It's nice to be able to put a name to a face kind of a thing. All right, so contact. I'll put my email address below. I will email you so that you have my... I don't even need to put my email address there. Anyway, um, I'll contact you. I'll send you an email and get a mailing address, and then I will pop those in the mail. Thank you again for supporting people who really need the extra support right now. So thank you for that. Last thing, I'll make this quick. Oh gosh, here I go again with the time. I've had a lot of people, and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. A lot of people ask about my ink boxes. I came up with this, this is my design. Some of the other stuff I don't design, them. I just you know alter what other people do, but this, is, this was my idea. And I've gotten some new kinds of bits. I used to use just spade bits in case you care, but now I use Forstner bits and that gives me the option to have bigger holes. And this is the one that's been on my desk for the last week so I can see how I liked using the four hole box. And I like it. I'll, I'll sand it and stain it and, and finish it one of these days, but I wanted to see how I liked it before I put that time into it. So my whole point with this is if you are interested in a box, I was listing this on Etsy and then Etsy started giving me fits. And basically, if you want one, email me. It might be a week or two before I can get to it, but the weather's a little bit better. It's not as cold, you know, outside, so I, I don't have a shop. I just have a garage. So I can make them, and I've got the three-inch size cut. And I don't have a sample here, but I just finished one for um, a person that has ink pads on both sides. And that obviously makes it a little bit longer, but if you're a person who likes dual ink pads or dual colors, that works as well. I haven't figured out a way to nicely use a slot for a bone folder or scissors or those kinds of things, but really this is an ink box with a glue holder just to keep my desktop clear. It benefits me and if it benefits you, I'm happy to make one. Now, international shipping is crazy spendy, crazy spendy, uh, and I can't even ship it to Australia, so I apologize for that. But if you want one, I will, I will go into the post office and mail it to you. Just know that it's going to be spendy. You have options. There's a one hole configuration that's a little bit smaller. I've made these, here I'll grab one. I've made these, the boxes themselves a little bit wider so that I can fit the archival ink pads in it. So this is a three inch box for the Tim Holtz ink, right? But I can make these just a little bit wider, a little bit longer. And if you're a person who uses this kind of a ink pad, I can, I can alter it and do that. I've got one with a five hole. And that I was playing with and I think that might be just a little too much for me but maybe not like if you were wanting to you know do something like this and you know with your distress collage medium or what have you so basically what I'm trying to say is if you have an idea of what you want and what you need and what you use all the time I can alter it just a bit to make it to make it work for you a two hole is a really common one you know for uh, this one won't work because of the size the Ramblin' Crafter, if you have a Ramblin' Crafter tool, I use a one and a half inch size as opposed to the one and a quarter that I use most of the time. You just have to let me know. I recently sent one to somebody who said her glue bottle didn't fit. And so I felt horrible, but you can always move your glue to the smaller glue bottles and these are available on Amazon. But if you let me know in advance, I can make the holes a little bit bigger to suit what you need. So there's that's a really common size, the two hole size with a place for the ink here and then the three hole one is the one that I've used forever and ever but I've been trying to use my Ramblin' Crafter tool which I really like because it does help my thumb I've got a cyst on my thumb and it does help a lot so I've been trying to do that so contact me it basically if you want one of these if you're interested if you feel it'll help you contact me and I will do what I can to make it happen all right thank you all very much for watching thank you for supporting people who need it and happy creating